Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat. I'm talking today with Sarah. Hello. Hi, Christian. How you doing? I'm doing well. And for folks that don't know you at all, who are you? Where are you? What do you do? Um, so yeah, I'm a techie based in Scotland. Um, I'm now a Microsoft MVP. I think that's the first time I've used that title. Um, I am an IT pro, sysadmin, operations person. That's my background. I've been in IT for about 17 odd years now. Um, I'm now working at Octopus Deploy, um, working on their community team as a senior solutions architect. And I think the other thing that I always say is I'm the founder of the Glasgow Azure user group here in Scotland as well. So that's a rough intro to my personal or professional life. <laughs> how is the uh, how has the user group activities been going? Are you guys kind of ramping back up, kind of as we're getting to the end, hopefully, of pandemic? Yeah, so we've been running virtually um, on mm. and off during the pandemic. Um, our next meetup should be at the end of April. Um, I'm still debating whether we do that in person and figuring out the logistics. Um, all of our kind of mass mandates and limits to people meeting should be finished by then. But I believe today um, we've just had the mass mandate reintroduced because of spikes. So it's it's an ever changing situation. And I guess it's trying to balance a meeting people in person because we all want to do that again, but also keeping people safe because I really definitely don't want to be the meetup organizer that organizes something and people get sick from. So yeah it's an I know awkward that there was, situation <laughs> I, I think it was uh was it uh february originally there was the scottish summit that was supposed to happen and that got moved to june june, june, june. yep and uh and so yeah so hopefully that'll happen um yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be over in that part of the world in june as well for oh, a different event for commsverse oh right um, yep. but um yeah i hope to to spend a little time and and get get out and see so many friends that I've not seen for two and a half years. Yep. Yep. In fact, I was, I was in London in December of 2019. So the European SharePoint conference, which happened oh, okay. uh, in, um, in Prague. Yep. And then I spent a few days over in London uh, with family and then uh, haven't been back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, so tell me about like your, your role. And so what do you, what do you do for people that want to know what it, like a solution architect, what's that all about? So it's an interesting job title that Octopus have chosen to, to label us with. And um, other, and other people would call us the developer relations or DevRel or advocates. Um, at Octopus, we've made the conscious decision not to use that title um, because we find it a bit um, exclusive because we don't just talk to developers and um, we talk to everybody in the IT department whether it's IT pros, developers, the CEO, you know the whole whole space so we didn't want to restrict ourselves by calling us developer relations um, so ultimately that's what the department is though and um, so we, we use the job title senior solutions architect but really I'm an advocate for Octopus so yeah. <laughs> You've just said, so you talked a lot about the title, but what, it, so what's the actual day to day yeah. look like? So it's about um, helping the community figure out how to use Octopus, solve the problems, find the gaps in our documentation, potentially in our product, um, and, and just engage with the community. At the moment, that means a lot of um, creating presentations and speaking at virtual meetups and user groups. Um, I'm also working on a blog post series, um, different things on the YouTube channel. So there's lots of context switching, lots of trying to engage with the community, trying to find people on um, Twitter and talk to people on Slack and Discord. So yeah, there's a wide variety of things that I do. Um, so yeah, it's, it's always interesting. Never two days are the same. <laughs> What I have to say is that, so I know that you've been in doing IT for, for many years and, and uh, I've been in this for my entire career since the yeah. early nineties. And, uh, and, and it's so great to see so much more focus on the community aspect of it, not just like, uh, uh, you know, saying, oh, it's, oh yeah, we support the community and do things other, but actually for organizations to recognize that 
active participation in the community as a company, as well as allowing, you know, making room for individuals to go in and participate in different ways in the community are, it's a strategy for companies. Yeah. And it's, it's a, I, I think it's in a very important strategy. I think it's, it's the way that, you know, companies that are you know, more plugged in the community will have a competitive advantage of those that refuse to be plugged in. Yeah. I think so, yeah. I think people buy from people. They don't necessarily buy a product sometimes. So I think, like you say, it's it's key for companies to to get in the community and have and have some interaction there because that's ultimately what it really is. Like I, I sound like a marketeer. I guess I am a marketeer to a certain degree, but you know, people that, buy from Disney, people. That's a Disney program, right? Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, it's true, like, if you think about the decisions you've made, even when it's like you're buying a car or something, you buy from a salesman who is engaging or a saleswoman who is really engaging. You don't buy from the person that's not interested in, in, in you know, being passionate and excited about a product that they're selling ultimately. So, yeah, it's that's really what it is. What's the divide or how do you separate kind of the the neutral MVP hat from the company official representative hat um i don't think it's necessarily come up because octopus um is in all areas so it's not only just microsoft that they can they can work with they almost work with like AWS. a multi-legged creature out there yeah, yeah it's <laughs> we we have that multi-cloud support and we also yep. talk to various different audiences so yes there is a little overlap but there's also lots of new things that i can explore that can be completely um, work related and then I can do um, my MVP um, kind of activities or community activities um, without having a crossover um, and have any conflict there hopefully. <laughs> I, well, I know that uh, some people struggle with that to understand well what's the difference I'm doing a lot of community related things but yeah when you go and you look at them like I do a, a ton of stuff that's community related but is directly part of my job like yes. I'm you know and so I don't add those items into my list of contributions that I submit to be renewed every year with Microsoft. Yeah. I, the things that I submit are the things which are completely separate from my company. They may have paid for me to, to travel. Like that's great to yeah. do that, but it's my time, my weekend, you know, the articles that I write that are out for my blog or for a third party site, that participation. Yeah. Some people have a difficult time kind of separating those two. Some companies have a difficult time separating those two. Yeah, I think there's things I'll learn on the job. Like, for example, I have been um, having fun with GitHub Actions and, and making it interact with Azure and things like that. And one of the things that I found that I needed to make notes of and have written notes myself um, around was creating the service principle for being able to connect with GitHub Actions. So I will write a blog post about that. Now it's not appropriate for the work blog or our documentation, because we already have some, some documentation about that. But I want notes to refer to next time I have to do that because I'm going to forget. Plus sharing that with the community will help other people potentially find that and help and engage them. So there's, there's separation there where I've learned something for my job, but I can actually reuse that potentially without it being conflicting, if that makes sense. And yep. hopefully that's the right definition of non-conflicting. <laughs> I think so. I mean, the, the, that's something that, I mean, I had an interesting conversation with a senior executive at Microsoft a few years back who I was trying to be very careful with making sure that, you know, information that was being shared with me that was under NDAs and MVP like I wasn't even sharing it with my product team. I was being yep. so careful. And this VP is just like, no, Christian, you're doing it wrong. And we, we're, we're assuming that you're taking that knowledge and you're careful about you know the discussions, but you're sharing it with your team. That's one of those advantages. But that's one of those things where, uh, again, I was trying to figure out what is the line? What what can yeah. I do? What Where am I truly neutral? I always looked at it as a badge of honor where I would get done with the presentation or something and somebody come and say, I have no idea what your company does. Like, right, because I didn't talk about my company at all. I was <laughs> presenting on SharePoint or Teams or whatever that is. And, yeah. and uh, it's like, so what does your company do? And you, know, you don't have to hammer people over the head. There's a 
usually a natural progression. If they're interested, if you're engaging, they like the content that you shared yeah. and your opinion around that, that, that next step is they'll ask, well, what do you do? What does your company do? And there's that, that opportunity. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So what, what was your path to becoming the MVP? So it's, it's a kind of long and winding one. So I probably started blogging about maybe 2015, 2016, around that kind of, maybe even earlier than that, to be honest. Um, and at that time, I was working for another big company um, here in Scotland. And I was actually talking to the MVP program about being an MVP, because at the same time, I was also um, involved in running the Glasgow Assure user group and starting that up. And then I ended up becoming a Microsoft employee. So I had to stop the conversation around being an MVP. Um, and I worked for Microsoft for three, three and a half years um, and then recently left and reignited that conversation around MVP um, nominations. So yeah, it's been roundabout. Um, and, and like you're saying, a lot of my job at Microsoft was community focused. I was getting paid to do a lot of community activities, but I also did a lot of activities myself and kept that very separate because that was something that was mine, wasn't Microsoft associated. I did it in my personal time because I wanted to, because I enjoyed it and I got a lot from it. Yep. Um, so yeah, I was doing a lot of activity simultaneously as being a Microsoft employee, but as I'm sure you know and your listeners know, you can't be an MVP and a Microsoft employee at the same nope. time. So um, it's nice to get that award finally <laughs> yeah. um, after, after kind of looking at it for a few years. So yeah, I've kind of taken a long and windy path to get that award so you know I, I i think there are two that i know of that are mvps that became an mvp within a month or two after leaving microsoft you, some people say well how could you do that like it has to be a because these were people like like you were doing you were still doing community activities i mean part of your job yeah. but there's a lot of us that regardless of the day job we're doing a lot of other sometimes unrelated you know activities i my last two years at microsoft I was over in the advertising area and so in advertising operations. And yet I was still participating in the user groups. I was on the, the board there in Seattle. I was still involved in that, that part of community. Um, you know, but I, of course, amped that up, did much more as soon as I had left Microsoft. Mm -hmm. But these were uh, these two other former Microsoft people had been doing such major things out there podcasts and shows and things which were unrelated to their day jobs that it just was a natural when they left and the microsoft team they figured out somebody submitted their name and like well of course these <laughs> people have been doing stuff all along and so it yeah it, it, it there's not a i say this again and again as you probably know too there's not a like a black it, it's a black box i mean there's there's not like a checklist of oh if you do these 10 things you will become an mvp um but it's it all rooted it, it's all rooted in that community activity. Yeah, absolutely. Well, very cool. Well, so what else? What are you speaking on now? What are your kind of the passion projects or topics? Um, so I'm actually um, learning Azure Bicep. So ironic, I had to leave Microsoft before I learned it or found the time to learn it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm I'm kind of dialing into um, Azure Bicep and having a look at that, and it kind of ties in obviously with. Um, where I'm going with the job as well about automation and, and deployments uh, at Octopus. So it's nice to have that kind of passion project and be able to use it at work. And again, trying to keep things separate. Um, but yeah, so Azure Biceps, one of the things I'm passionate about. And I'm also um, passionate about Windows Package Manager. Um, I wrote a learn module about that just before I, I left Microsoft and got that published. Um, and I still think it's a great tool. So. I'm trying to submit some talks to conferences around package managers and things like that because I think it's an underrated tool that not a lot not a people use um, and there's definitely lots of things you can use it for um, so yeah that's my kind of two passion areas right now. <laughs> that's a you just that's a great strategy for people that want to kind of stand out as well is just to go and dig through the the list of there's so many different products so many different things and there are there are some really cool tools which are uh, not as, as uh, um, uh, you know, uh, as visual as, as uh, you know, out, out in front as other major announcement things are out there. So you can actually yeah. go and 
always tell people, talk about, share what you know, what you're working with. So if you've discovered some tools or scripts or, or package, some solution out there that uh, you know, you've just not heard that much about, write about it, talk about it, and it could be yeah. a pathway to becoming an MVP. Yeah. My um, colleague on Thomas at Microsoft always talks about filling the gap, fill the gap that's there with, you know, find that, find that gap and then fill it. Um, right. So I'm always, always mindful of doing that as well. Um, Which is not to say you shouldn't write about, talk about things that others have written and talked about as well, because you have your perspective, yes. your, your background on that as well. But, but yeah, that's a, finding those gaps and filling those gaps is always a great strategy. <laughs> Well, Sarah, well, thanks so much for taking the time. For folks that want to find out more about you or find you, what are the best ways to reach you? Um, so I'm on Twitter as Techie Lass, um, or my blog is techielass.com. That's where you can find me. <laughs>